Hey there, CPO here, and I'm ready to start cutting out the body for my tricopter based off of the design plans that I developed previously. So if you're following along with a different set of plans, uh, go ahead and print those out now. Hopefully they're like mine and they fit on a single sheet of paper, which will make it convenient for building. So grab your plans, let's get started. The first thing I recommend you do after you print your plans is make sure they're to the exact scale that you need. As you can see on my plans, I have a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter reference box that I can measure with my caliper to make sure that my printout is exactly one for one from the plans. To do this, I just set my caliper to 20 millimeters, and then I measure both the vertical and the horizontal distances of my reference box to make sure everything printed out the way I'd like it. In this case, it's dead on, so we can continue. If, however, you have a plan that doesn't have a reference box like this, you can use a known value on the plans and then make sure it measures out exactly the way it should. So the material I'm using for the body is this 1 8 inch plywood. I need to mark out how much wood I need to get two of these panels. One will go for the top and then one will be for the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll just cut out two uh, sections of wood and then stack them on top of each other and cut them at the same time. I'm just eyeballing how much I need and then I'll mark it with a pencil and then use a straight edge to draw a line across. That'll be my cut line. This line doesn't have to be precise at all. The whole point of this is just to get two manageable pieces of wood instead of trying to work off this one big piece. Now that I have my line, I can just cut that piece of wood off. Check one more time and make sure my body will fit on there, and it does. So safety first, make sure you've got your eye protection whenever you start cutting. So first, let me qualify this by saying I am not a woodworker. Um, I know very little about woodworking at all. I'm using a Dremel here with a, uh, a cutting bit and actually have clamped down a straight edge to use as a guide for cutting this line. I'm going to wish later on in this build that I would have used that same process for the rest of the body because I experimented with some different methods of cutting and uh, I could have done a better job. But hey, in the end, the wood is just a way to hold things together. So if you make mistakes, just roll with it. I'm sure it'll be fine. So now I've got the first body panel ready to cut out and I'm just going to stack it on top of the rest of the wood here and then cut out a duplicate of that so that I can have two sections that are about the same width. A quick pencil mark and I'm ready to start cutting out this second piece of wood. So here we go, two uh, fairly equal size pieces of wood that I will use to cut out my body panels with. I decided I would go ahead and cut the top of the panel straight uh, so that I could put it against the edge of the wood and that would save me one cut and would help me make sure everything was lined up. So I just kind of rough cut this off and it doesn't have to be perfect just so I have something to line up with the top of the wood. Now you may choose to just cut out the entire template and that's just fine. I tend to like to leave the templates uh, where I have the lines uh, for cut lines and then just cut the template whenever I cut the wood. So it's up to you how you want to do that. I had some of this double stick tape laying around so I thought I would use it to tape the template down to the wood. I just laid a couple of strips down the middle of the template. It worked okay. You could always use more tape than I used um, but this seemed to do the job. And basically I just got that top edge lined up from the cut mark and then smoothed down and uh, taped the template to the top piece of wood there. To make everything easier to manage I just decided to rough cut around the template with a razor just to get rid of some of this floppy paper. Again I like to leave the lines of the template and use those when I actually cut the material. I do the same thing with foamy builds. Um, I just tape the template to the foam board and then you know, cut with a razor through the foam board and the template at the same time. It works well for me. I decided to use some CA glue and uh, just put some glue dots around uh, the piece of wood and then use uh, the CA to hold the two pieces together. It's just a medium CA. 
I decided to go around the outside and then that way um, the two pieces that I was working on would not be glued together. Uh, I don't know if that made a difference or not. Um, anyway, learn from my mistakes. If you don't like it, do something different. It seemed to work okay, although my two pieces did separate prematurely uh, while I was cutting, so I had to deal with that as well. I had this little automatic center punch laying around, and I decided to use that to go ahead and punch holes for all of my screw holes. The reason I did this is because I wanted some real uh, clear understanding of exactly where my hole marks were, and a center punch is an easy way to do that. If you don't have an automatic one, you can use a uh, you know a hammer and any sort of a you know a pointy tip like a scratch all or or even a, a manual center punch. Um, but I went through and just poked holes for all of the um, screw locations because, quite frankly, no matter how imprecise the rest of the build is, uh, everything kind of comes together with these screw holes. So I wanted to make sure I got them as close as I could. Uh, but if I screw up the outside of the body or the edges or whatever. It doesn't really matter that much as long as my screw holes are all in the right place. As you can see here, uh, that method does a pretty good job of getting some nice uh, defined hole locations for uh, later drilling. I made a last minute decision to tape the edges just to try and hold the paper down as well as I could. Remember I only have a couple of pieces of double stick tape down there now so it's uh, not a bad idea to have some extra reinforcement to hold that template on since that's where my cut lines are going to be. If the template falls off, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. The next step I decided to do was drill out the holes with a 3 millimeter drill bit. I found a 3 millimeter in, oddly enough, this uh, little high speed still mini drill bit. I didn't buy it for that reason, but uh, I'll use it. Otherwise, an eighth inch drill bit will be close enough. I'm taking a fairly methodical approach to drilling out these holes with this Dremel workstation, kind of a drill press adapter. Um, because I have those well-defined holes that I already made with the center punch, I'm using the drill in an off position, line up with the hole and get it exactly right before I actually turn on the drill and then uh, and drill the hole. My plan is, again, to get the holes as accurate as I can and uh, regardless of how the rest of the build turns out, as long as the holes are in good shape, everything will come together just fine. So a bandsaw would have been a perfect uh, tool to use for this but I didn't have one of those and I thought I was going to use uh, one of these little cut cutting wheels uh, attached to the Dremel but what I found is it just didn't have enough guts to get through both sheets of plywood at the same time it would just uh, almost crawl to a stop each time so I quickly gave up on that I ended up going back to the cutting bit and just rough cutting the body panels it could have been a lot better I felt okay getting it pretty close, knowing that I could sand it to get the final shape where I wanted it. To hold the two panels perfectly together so when I sand them together, they end up being the same, I just used some of these uh, three millimeter screws uh, and uh, put them through the two body panels to hold them together. I put the nuts on just enough to hold the screws from falling out, but I didn't actually tighten the entire assembly down, um, basically just using the screws for alignment. Then I put a flat piece of sandpaper down on the workbench and uh, just sanded off the edges. I used a couple different methods. This was the one method I used for the final sanding. I felt more comfortable getting nice flat uh, surfaces that way. There were a couple of surfaces that were a little bit more misaligned uh, than I felt like the manual sanding would easily accomplish. So I used this little sanding wheel to knock down areas that needed a lot of wood removed. Then I went back to manual sanding to finish off the, uh, the flat spots. I think it worked a lot better. Um, again, like I said, I'm not a woodworker. There's probably a lot of better ways to do this. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. But like I mentioned before, as long as the holes are lined up uh, where you want them, then everything else uh, is just 
kind of holding things together. So it's more cosmetic at this point than anything else. So could it have been better? Absolutely. Uh, will I do it differently next time? Probably so. Uh, but I don't think it turned out too bad, giving uh, the tools that I was trying to use to get the job done. It's my first time to cut out uh, a wooden tricopter body. And, uh, you know, I think it turned out okay. So after all of the cutting and sanding, here's what I have uh, for the body assembly. So uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, could it have been better? Yes, but uh, I think it turned out pretty good uh, for doing all this with a Dremel. So I designed this body so that it would hold the KK 2.1 in the foam that it comes in. And this is just a quick test fit and everything's looking good. Well folks, that's it. I uh, hope you don't mind me taking you along on my first time to cut out a tricopter body. Uh, I hope you learned something if you were looking for some information. I know I learned a lot along the way. Uh, but at any rate, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.